Dunkirk tells the true story of the evacuation of Allied forces from Dunkirk, France, who are surrounded by German forces on the sea, land, and air during World War II. So every once in a while, a movie will come along where everybody loves it, critics are given high praise, moviegoers just can't stop talking about it, and I'm sort of in the background going, all right, it's pretty good, I'm kind of lukewarm on it. I mean, I think some movies come to mind like Drive. Uh, I, I, for what it is, it's really good, but I wasn't living up to the hype for it. And last year's Jungle Book was the same thing. That movie was fantastic to look at with the visual effects, but I had a couple problems with it, and I was sort of like... All right, it's pretty good. And unfortunately, this time around, it's Dunkirk that I feel this about. I mean, everybody is singing praises for this movie, and I, I just, I'm just not falling head over heels for it. I still think it's an enjoyable movie, don't get me wrong. I, I do like the film. I had a, a good time watching it, but I don't think it's as good as everybody says it is. And like I said before, I did enjoy this film. There's plenty of things to like about it. I mean, for one, it looks fantastic. It's a Christopher Nolan movie, for God's sake. You're not going to find anybody that can argue that this is a bad-looking movie. I got a real old-school filmmaking vibe from this film, from using real locations, the mass amount of extras, the real boats and planes. It just it made everything feel that much more real. And because of that, I felt like I was really in this place, and I, there wasn't really a frame in here that I didn't believe. And... A lot of people argue this is the most realistic war film they've seen, and I would agree with that. Another thing I really liked about this film was how, how the story was told and how it was edited. I mean, it's in typical Nolan fashion. It's told in a way that isn't a traditional form of storytelling, and I really enjoyed it. And when you figure it out at the exact moment, I can remember the exact moment that I figured how he was telling the story, because it would shift to a character in a day, and then the next scene, it's the same character, and it's, it's like, wait a minute. Oh, so it's really just telling the story, not so much a non-linear way, but you get, you, you could see the same thing happening at the same time, but from different perspectives. And I really liked how it did that. And when it worked, it really did work. But there's some times where it kind of got a little confusing. But for the most part, I really enjoyed that part about the film. And pretty much what everybody would tell you that's seen this film is that there's a lot of tense moments in this movie, and I will definitely agree with that. There's so many moments where you're sort of like really tense and feel for the people that are in these scenes. And I, what I think is really smart about these scenes is that you never see a German soldier in any of them. You don't see a German soldier throughout the entire film, and I think that was done on purpose because a lot of the times when you know the attack is coming, you hear it coming first, whether it's gunshots or the planes zooming in and you hear them coming in the distance and you're like, oh God, here it comes again. And I thought that was really smart of Nolan to do, to have the Germans be represented through their, their weapons or their arsenal or their airplanes. I thought that was so good. But unfortunately for all this film has to offer, there really doesn't have much to offer as far as character goes. And I think that's the film's biggest downfall is that there wasn't a whole lot of attention paid on the characters. And when all of the tense stuff is going on and the planes are coming in and zooming and bombing, I really didn't care about pretty much anything that was happening because I didn't care about the characters in the situations. And a lot of people argue that it's not about the characters, it's about like the situation it's in. And that was another problem that I found with not dealing with a lot of character development or character stories, that there wasn't a whole lot of drama going on. There's drama going on with the situations that they're in, with planes coming in and ships sinking, that I feel for, but then there wasn't really anything for me to grab on because I really didn't care about a lot of the characters and there wasn't enough drama in there and I wasn't invested in what they were doing. And I do praise the film for not going the stereotypical way of here's this character and oh, I'm, you know, um, my name is this and I got a wife and kid at home and you know, I'm, this is why I'm fighting for. And I like that all the characters had the same goal is I want to get home. They don't have, it, 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 they didn't go in and explain like their family history and things like that. There's no scene of them sitting around talking like, like like that, but it just really conveyed that the only goal of this film is to get home. And I, I thought that was really ambitious and I appreciated it for it, but I could see that turning off a couple of people if you're going in for a lot of character drama and being attached to one character um, in the film, you don't really get that. I think if you're expecting that, you're gonna be a little let down like I was. And to jump off of that point too, there's very little spoken dialogue in this film. The character that you open with, just right in the middle of it, he doesn't say anything for, the, I think, the first like 30 minutes of the movie. And for me, that made the movie kind of dull between the tense scenes. I mean, you, there, when you're in the thick of it, when like you know the planes are coming in or the ship's sinking, you're in 
the, that scene and you're really feeling the tension. But once all that is over, there's all this like downtime and you're, I'm just, I'm constantly waiting for the movie just to give me something with the characters to hook me in and care for them a little bit more. You never really get that. And for me, it, a lot of the movie is really boring at times. And I'm just, again, I'm just kind of waiting for things to happen. And it's like, all right, here's the next time that they're in peril. Okay, now it's done. Now let's, let's go find another way to get off the island. Oh, here's the next thing. And it's, ooh, tension from tension. All right, it's over. And that was pretty much the whole movie for me. And I will say that I do like how the movie wraps up. And it, the payoff is worth it, but I just didn't like the setup for it. I don't know. I, I just I I can see where people would like this film and why they're praising it so much. But for, I just don't see how they can forgive all the other stuff that's missing and what the movie is lacking. Because again, I wanted to care about these characters, but the the movie just didn't give it to me. And and that's this film's biggest flaw, and that's why I'm I'm not head over heels for it. So in the end, this movie is a really good looking spectacle film. It has some really tense moments in it. And I think that's what most people are latching onto are the scenes of tension. But unfortunately, I think that I would have liked more character development and I would like to see more things for me to care for these people that are in these situations. But I was sort of able to get past some of the issues I had with it and still enjoy the movie for what it is. And it is a fine film, but I just don't think it's a great film. So I'm giving Dunkirk three out of five stars. So now I'm turning it over to you. If you saw Dunkirk, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. If you liked this review, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and check out some of my other videos on this channel. Stay up to date on all of those. The subscribe button is right there. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video.